today on Country Pocket. Her new album is Our Country. Miko Marks, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. The first track I just played is called Ancestors. Um, It's sort of a perspective you don't get on a regular country song calling to your ancestors for strength. Um, Can you tell me about how that song came to be? Well, for me, um, uh, being rooted in um, the church has been really a foundational piece of my my musical background and always paying respect to those that have gone on um, and acknowledging them as our angels, as our overseers, as was really taught to me at a very young age. So I was able to, um, we were able to incorporate that sense into um, ancestors because I think across the line we all have people that have gone on before us that are constantly leading and guiding us in this life as we live it. Yes. Um, also, um, wanted to sort of talk about the ancestors of country music and the fact that despite what we see out of Nashville, a lot of those ancestors of country music were African Americans. Absolutely. A lot of um, African Americans were really the shepherds of country music. You know, a lot of, like, say, the Carter family, they had a lot of help from Leslie Riddle. Um, There was, um, you know, Hank Williams and his relationship with um, Rufus that helped him um, get his uh, repertoire together. And there was just a lot of um, support and blending of the genres, whether it's hillbilly music and race music, which they separated them into. There was a lot of... um, togetherness and uh, group efforts on the music back in the day that wasn't exposed to everybody. Um, do you have, um, I want to play, um, I want to play some songs other than the ones off your album today during the show. Do you have any songs that uh, come from that era that you would want uh, our audience to hear? Um, absolutely. That's so wonderful that you're asking about um, other songs because I've been doing a lot of um, soul searching as far as uh, traditional country music and like the, the founding um, pioneers. Um, so I would say definitely things by the Carter family, um, Foggy Mountaintop, uh, the Monroe Brothers' Long Journey Home, and you know, just um, I've had a an epiphany to harken back to these songs because I think that they are, they shouldn't get lost in the, in, um, in the shuffle, so to speak. They should be acknowledged and, and praised and, um, listened to more often. I wanted to play one. Um, it's a, a recording that Dom Flemons made of one called Goodbye Old Paint, which is a song mm. I've known for a long time, but only after he put out his album, Black Cowboys, did I learn that it was a black man named Charlie Willis who wrote that song. And oh, wow. it just shows how how black writers were a big part of the early days of country music. And uh, we're going to hear those songs you mentioned and the one I mentioned and we, we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about your time through uh, going through modern Nashville and why you chose to sort of reestablish in Oakland and come out with a new sound. Okay, and I want to just kind of touch on that last point that you made that uh, re- regarding the songs by Don Clemens that was written by um, a black writer. I am almost like um I'm almost a hundred percent positive that there is music out there that we have no idea who the original writer was. Um so I'm sure there's been much more country music written by African American artists than we would know. I certainly believe that, especially knowing that, you know, even modern folk music sort of originated from when people academics went around and 
collected recordings of all these singers, black and white, who were, you know, not at all professional out in the country, just doing their thing. And that music became the foundation for largely white movements, whether it be country or folk or what have you. Exactly. So we'll hear those songs and we'll be right back. 